What's up everyone? I'm Melissa McCack from Room 51 and this is Teach the Teach where I teach you how to teach a board game and in this video I'll be covering Euphoria. Now this is a how to teach video so that means I'm assuming you already know how to play this game and now you're looking to teach it to other players. There are plenty of ways to teach games. This is just a way that has worked for me and maybe it could help you out if you have any sort of difficulties teaching either Euphoria in particular or just games in general. I also know that Jamie Stegmeier has already pl uh, put out a video on how to teach this game and he even includes it in the rule book, uh, some suggestions on how to teach this game. Some of the things that I uh, will say are sort of similar to what he suggests. Some of the things might be different so I definitely want to get into that. Now I always start off with three things in every video pretty much. I say that I start off with telling the players what the story is behind the game, right? That you are leading your own dystopian pretty much. Second, I go into what is the objective of the game, letting people know that this, you're trying to get all your stars out as quickly as possible. You want to be the first one to do it. And then third, the way the game ends. And well, with this one, the game ends when somebody wins right? So there are a lot of moving parts in this game. I think a lot of the challenges in teaching this game come from how so many different things have to do with something else. It kind of works like a clock where you have to do this one thing in order to get this thing done in order to do that. And that might be where the difficulty comes from in teaching the game in terms of getting players to wrap their head around what's going on in this game. But I think that it would be a little bit easier for me to show you what I do by showing you the state of the board. So let me get into that. Let's bring us down to the board. So a lot of what I do, and this is pretty much what I'm always trying to do when I'm teaching games, I'm figuring out what can I put together that way it makes it a little bit easier. What I mean is what kind of like actions on this board can I couple together in order to better explain it to players. That way I'm not explaining so many things and making it quicker, making it so that people are playing as quickly as possible and wrapping their head around the rules as well. So the first thing that I let them know is that this is a worker placement game and that these dice are your workers and that they start off with two, they could go ahead and roll them and place them uh, by them and letting them know that this is gonna indicate, the numbers on here is gonna indicate how much knowledge they have. And I usually try to let them know with the story that you're trying to keep your workers as dumb as possible. That way they don't uh, realize that they're actually in a dystopia and run away. So that way they kind of have a concept as to, oh, okay, we want them to be dumb. We don't want these dice uh, to be uh, particularly high numbers usually. And then you go into how this is a worker placement game. So you could place your worker on your turn that you have uh, three actions you could possibly do. You either put one of your workers out on the board or you retrieve all your workers or you can fulfill your ethical dilemma. And you can let them know that you'll get into the ethical dilemma a little bit later because most of what you're doing are the two actions of placing workers down and taking them away. From there, I get into the actions that they could take. And I'll usually start off with maybe the farm section. I, I tell them about like the farm, the aquifer, the generator, and the cloud mine up there um, on the board. And I say that they all work pretty much the same. And you could go into the farm and I let them know pretty much how this works and how uh, this works in terms of uh, what the knowledge is and then the thresholds and what they get. So I explain how this farm works. Then I let them know that the aquifer, the generator, and the cloud mine up there all work the exact same. You're just getting a different sort of commodity uh, or you're pushing up this track. Now, from there, when you're explaining uh, how this symbol allows you to push up this uh, track for the allegiance track, and at this point, they don't quite have a recruit yet because I don't get into that just yet. I get into that a little bit later, but you just say that uh, these are going to give you certain benefits depending on what recruits you have. So that's fine. So now they already know what all of these do. 
Then I told them about the tunnel and how they could place their worker possibly here and that the knowledge doesn't really mean anything for the tunnels and then just letting them know that anything in the square on the board is a cost of the action and that anything in a circle on the board is the benefit of the action and just letting them know like how that works right where you would spend the water and you'd get one of these things and that the miner will move up along the track and at this point you don't quite I don't usually let them know about this symbol just yet because they haven't picked out their recruit uh, people yet and you could just let them know that you'll explain a little bit later uh, what some of these other symbols mean. And then you can let them know that all of the tunnels work the exact same. So again, now they, they know what this stuff is, they know how to get the commodities, they know how to get resources in the game. And from there, this is when I usually say that you might notice that they are there are no tunnels for uh, the Icarite territory. So let me actually just bring this camera up a little bit so I could show that. So they'll see there's Ooh. no tunnel for here, but there's these other spaces that they could go to get other sort of benefits and there's other sort of costs up there. And this is usually where you want to point their attention to this card, how this sort of tells you what commodities are in this game and then like what the resources are in this game, which is pretty cool. At this point, this is probably where you want to explain a little bit more about the allegiance and how the recruits work. So you go ahead and you give them the uh, four recruit cards here and you could let them know they could pick whichever one they want. But what I usually do is I pick out a couple of these from the deck here, uh, set them aside. That way I could say to them, OK, so you'll have some cards in your uh, hand and over here it will show the symbol of the allegiance that they belong to and it also tells you right down here uh, the name of the allegiance and that this is the bulk of what you're going to be trying to do you're going to push these allegiances and then you could bring their attention back down to the allegiance track here saying that when these push up and they're going to go into certain thresholds to give you certain benefits but it only gives you benefits for if you have an active allegiance uh, recruit member okay so you'll let them know that you're going to pick two of them and one is going to be face down, one is going to be face up, and that'll be your active recruit. And then this is when you also let them know about how to actually activate their face down recruit. How when this allegiance track marker reaches this threshold, you'll get to reveal it. This is also how you'll get to reveal your, uh, your other, uh, your Icarite recruit if you have one. Uh, by the top space here where you're gonna you're going to keep pushing this along and uh, eventually you'll get your Icarite allegiance up enough and you could also let them know that another way to get their uh, recruit uh, activated are by these tunnels right they're gonna notice that there is this symbol here and when you get there you'll get to flip over your card now, I don't go into everything that is on this allegiance track. I just say when, as the uh, game progresses and this goes up, uh, I'll place this onto the board wherever it's supposed to be, letting them know that, okay, this is what this means as long as you have uh, a recruit from that allegiance. And I'll reiterate that as the game goes on, that way they understand uh, you actually have to have a recruit from that allegiance. From there, there's just two more spaces that you really have to talk about. One is this, um, so let me actually move the camera here, is this worker, worker activation space. This is where I let them know that this is uh, a place that you could gain more workers. And I just explain, right? So like you could either go here or here and kind of what they do, but they should already kind of now get some sort of sense of how this works, right? Because now they know this is the cost, this is the benefit. And then there is the uh, construction spaces that you want to talk about and telling them that when you go there, uh, you could spend the resource, your die will be sort of like locked in there. Uh, if you want it to be, but you'll be progressing this construction here and then letting them know that if you don't get in on the construction, also pointing their attention to how many uh, spaces need to be filled up for uh, this construction to be constructed. Uh, once you construct this, if you were not part of the construction, just letting them know there's some sort of bad thing that'll happen for you. 
Uh, and then you could even let them know that a new space is going to be open once it's constructed in order to place. I don't quite tell them just yet about how to, if they were not part of the construction process, how to get the star onto there. But uh, I tell them that a little bit later, once this is actually revealed, I say, okay, not all is lost. You could still go either there or there to get your star onto the construction site. Um, I also let them know about the artifact territory where this is another place where you could place your worker in order to get your stars out onto the territory. And at that point, that's when I let them know that this space is limited. Uh, if, there, if this space is all filled up, then you, there's no more stars that could be placed there. And then the last thing you want to tell them is that there are some squares that have uh, this symbol here with like an arrow. And that's a square that uh, your die could be bumped off. So if somebody else wants to take it, it'll bump off. And that's good for the person who was there because now they get to immediately roll it and they'll be able to use it. Letting them know that uh, you're going to remind them that there are three things you could do. So those were the things you could do when you're placing out your worker. But then you could also recall your worker and letting them know you don't have to recall all of them. You can recall some or as many as you want. You could point their attention uh, to the little key there uh, that says what the cost is to retrieve your worker. Letting them know that they could spend the morale if they want to, even if they only have one uh, morale left. And at that point, you just let them know that morale for you is your hand size for these, uh, uh, art, uh, what are these? These artifact cards. And from there, I'm pretty sure that you can really just start playing the game and you'll start to explain certain things as they go along. For example, I haven't quite gone into what happens when this little miner actually reaches the end here. You don't really have to tell them until like maybe this miner is you know, inching its way, maybe like halfway through. Um, or you could even wait if you wanted to, once the miner hits the end, that there's this new benefit now if you have an allegiance uh, to this faction. I also don't really tell them about the doubles for the cards just yet, uh, because it's not really necessary in the beginning since, you know, there's they're not going to be able to do it just yet. I might wait a couple of uh rounds to then let them know hey you might have noticed that some of these cost uh cards here and they they usually cost three but if you have two of the same card then you could discard those instead of the three and then that's also when i go into doubles or if somebody's already rolled doubles i might uh tell them about that i might even just wait until somebody rolls doubles on their dice so that means you have to be paying attention to what people do if that doesn't work for you you can let them know uh right off the bat how doubles work in the game in terms of spending the morale and whatnot but usually i just wait until somebody actually rolls doubles and letting them know that hey this is a benefit of rolling doubles but after that that's pretty much it so i will meet you back at uh you know my face so at that point they pretty much know everything they need to know in order to play euphoria certain questions might arise and that's okay they usually do in games anyway uh it's all about just kind of going with the flow figuring out what do they need to know right now and what could be held off right now but a lot of it is just coupling those uh, sort of actions together to make sure, okay, this is all the same thing, this is all the same thing, and then what I normally do, because once you've explained everything and now it's time to go and play the game, they might be overwhelmed with all the possibilities because there's a lot of uh, actions that you could possibly take and you might not quite know uh, what to do. So usually I say, what you might want to do for the first couple of turns is work towards either one of three things. One being just trying to get your face down recruit activated. You could try for that. Or you could work towards trying to get your face up recruit, uh, get that star at the end of the allegiance track. And at that point, you could even just let them know, like, if this ever reaches the end of the track, you actually gain a star for that uh, recruit that belongs to that allegiance. Um, or the other thing that you could do is work towards whatever the ability is on your recruit, your activated recruit. Uh, try to do some sort of action that allows that ability to go off. That way they have some sort of 
uh, understanding of maybe, or not an understanding, but a direction as to where to go with the game, at least for the first couple of turns until they start to realize, okay, so I have to do get this thing in order to get that thing. That way I could get this construction going, all that sort of stuff. But anyway, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any sort of questions or comments, uh, leave them down in the comments below. Or if you uh, have some other way that you'd like to teach this game, I would love to know. So let me know. Anyway, this has been another Teach the Teach. So thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.